Welcome to the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Hello, everyone. This is Jarvis S. Scott with What's Happening in Birmingham. Today, I got the honor and pleasure. I'm here with Birmingham City Councilor, Councilor Wardeen Alexander for District 7. Councilor Alexander, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Great, great, great. It's this time of year. I mean, this year, 2023, has gone by really fast. I just want to bring her on today to kind of look back and see what she's been up to. Since we're in the holiday season, you had a bike and tour giveaway lately, correct? Oh, yes. D7, we've been in the spirit of giving for the past few weeks. We started out with our Thanksgiving giving, and we've ended the year now with Christmas giving. Uh, I helped to support two organizations, the Southwest Alliance. They had a great parade and toy and bike giveaway, and also with the men of Powderly. Both of those organizations are very important to the residents here in District 7. I'm always excited to partner with them and give support so that we can spread that joy and love within the district. So I do want to start first by thanking both of those organizations, uh, Mr. Walt Wilson, as well as Mr. Gary Lavender, who uh, both um, run those two organizations and they head those up and they are just always great partners in the community. Okay, as you all know this, I'm always using the introduction saying council president or D Alexander, but you have a new title because every two years you all switch over. So can you kind of tell people what's the position of protest? Well, yes. According to the Mayor Council Act, the City Council does uh, consider leadership every two years. So when we first started with the 2021 Council, I was um, very excited and very grateful to my colleagues. They nominated me unanimously and voted me to be president. It has been a pleasure to serve as their president for the past two years, and I'm equally excited and delighted that they're giving me this opportunity to continue to serve in leadership as the council pro tem. People may ask, what's the pro tem? The pro tem is actually the vice president of the city council, so I work to support our council president and, um, again, provide leadership and guidance and um, just collaborate with the other seven counselors. Okay, great. So looking back as your, when you was in prison, what were some things you was your, things you accomplished you used to look back? What was your biggest well, accomplishment? Well, when I first became council president, it was very important to me to, um, I focused mainly uh, the beginning of my term as council president, wanting to ensure structure, um, a sense of um, decorum in our council meetings. And I'm uh, just reminding citizens that that is a business meeting. Uh, we have an agenda that mm -hmm. has certain items. And so therefore, um, that's what I concentrated on. And that's what I promised my colleagues that we would uh, work on our, uh, the business side of that council meeting. And I think that I, I brought that. Um, it was a challenge. It can be a challenge when you're focusing on not only leadership of the council, but you got to remember, you still have a district that you have to represent and advocate for. So um, I am very pleased with the work that we did while I was council president. We had some um, very good goals in working with the mayor, uh, road improvement, street improvement, um, helping to uh, eliminate blight. Of course, we have challenge with safety issues, uh, but working to support any of those programs that we have in this tool block toolbox that we're trying to create to make our neighborhoods safe. Okay, now going to your district, what were some things you was like accomplishments you would say for 2023 that you was able to get accomplished? Well, I'm uh, very excited for the uh, effective use of the ARPA dollars. This was money okay. that was provided by President Biden, where each counselor was allocated a certain set of funds. I've used those funds so far to um, set up STEM program at, with the West Hills Community Development Center. That was almost $300,000 that was being put towards creating a STEM program, um, three pre-K um, education programs for residents in the Powderly area. Uh, what gives me most pride in that is that we know that transportation can be a challenge for our residents, even when they're trying to get to work or provide those services for their families. And so that's why I really wanted to support this effort 
over at the West Hills uh, Community Development Center, because this is within that, that community. And that means parents can walk their children over for those pre-K classes, or um, students, when they get out of school in the evening, they can go and um, have additional instruction in STEM. So that was something that was very rewarding to me. Also was able to provide some assistance for the critical repair program. This is where we'll be uh, actually pouring money into the district to help those citizens who need critical repairs on their homes. And so that's also very effective use of ARPA dollars. We continue to work towards one of the things I'm looking for in 2024 uh, or before the end of, of the term is to also use this money to create some affordable housing within areas within D7. So we continue to focus on how we can make D7 a better place to live. Yeah, one of the things, too, I, I know one thing you advocate more than anything is continue paving the roads to your district. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, started out with the bang in 2018, um, focusing really on paving. We got to say it again, paving Jefferson Avenue. So we continue <laughs> to work on paving. There were over uh, 22 streets or roadways within District 7 that were targeted to be paved this year. So very again, glad again to be able to allocate that money uh, going towards the paving by supporting the mayor's budget when it comes to um, paving and street um, resurfacing within the district. Okay, well, I'm going to go transition over to more council business. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad I got you on, because one thing I always love about you is that you're not afraid <laughs> to tell us why you voted for something, why you voted yes or no or support it. And so I always commend you for that. Um, so first thing I want to talk about is the Birmingham Southern College, the five million. Well, it's yes, as you know, um, just recently we did allocate funds to Birmingham Southern. Um, this particular allocation was different than what had been brought to us before. This <laughs> is not just giving the money. It is a loan. It has a repayment plan that's part of that a loan uh, to Birmingham Southern to keep those doors open. Um, I began to think of the students that were there, and I can only imagine if you had your first first semester and you don't know if you will have that second semester. So that is why I did uh, finally join my colleagues in uh, supporting to provide that loan, because it was not just giving the money, it was um, providing a loan structure with that and a repayment plan with that. So um, I have a daughter that's in college myself. And so I thought of those students and those parents. And of course, that is over 200 acres that we wouldn't want to remain uh, to be closed, similar to how we saw Caraway hospital and that area deteriorate. So I'm happy that we uh, were able to create that option. And I do hope that they will be able to keep those doors open for those students. Okay. And one thing too, and, and you correct me, Eva, that you all are listed as, the, the city is listed as a lien holder on the property too, right? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. So taking all that into consideration um, is the reason to um, support that eventually. Okay, and there's another update. I guess this goes more over to the Inslee residents about the Ramsey McCormick building. Yes, um, we did take some action on uh, this past Tuesday, and that was to extend an agreement that we have been in for the past several years. Um, the plan is to still to build that structure into a, I think it's going to be a four-story facility that will bring additional revenue, uh, economic impact to the Inslee area. It's a vital source of the business, Inslee Business District. And that's why we continue to work to meet that commitment and that court order to build that building and restore some of that wealth and grandeur to the Inslee Business District. And then I see the Alphas, you all finally, the Regents Bank building as well. That's right. That's another, uh, one of our objectives as a council and a mayor is to support small businesses, nonprofits, and so very excited that the men of Alpha Phi Alpha for this particular chapter, uh, they bought that vacant bank building and they're gonna make it a community resource as well. So I'm um, very excited to be able to support them in that endeavor. This not only uh, will enhance, again, that neighborhood and that area, but it'll provide vital resources to those families over in that district. Well, and I see that you recently got appointed to a vice chair position for yes. human development. Okay. 
Yes, this is part of the National League of Cities, and uh -huh. there are over 40,000 cities or municipalities that operate across the United States. And um, the National League of Cities is a conglomeration, it's a support for municipalities like the city of Birmingham, large and small. So my role is the vice chair of the Human Development Advocacy Group. This is a federal advocacy group. We'll be talking about um, care and assistance for women and children, workforce development, education, everything that means family and home. So I'm excited to be able to work with this particular focus group. And what the goal of that group is to develop federal policies that we can take to Capitol Hill that can help to represent and advocate for this group of people in our in our municipality. Okay, and as we close, um, you know, I guess I guess one final thing before I get to the final thing. Do you have any upcoming trash and garbage pickup coming up? Well, we don't. We are in a lull right now. Uh, we've had okay. our last neighborhood cleanup. We'll start that back up. Um, early spring, late in the uh, winter, but early spring is when we plan to start those back up again. Okay. Well, as we close, any final thoughts? I know we're coming across the you know, time of this taping a um, couple, couple of days before Christmas. Anything you want to tell the residents? Well, I do want to tell the residents I continue to be grateful for the support and the um, and, and what the support that's entrusted in me to advocate and to represent the residents of District 7. I am wishing each household in District 7 peace and tranquility and resilience as we enter into the new year. I'm hoping that everyone has a joyous Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2024. Well, I know I can't speak for all the citizens, but I can just speak as the interviewer. Just want to thank you for your, I mean, your time, dedication, and just your willingness to take any role. You know. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Yeah, you're a citizen, but whether it's council president, pro tem, or committee chair, you just, you willing to step in and just be a representative for the people. Well, I thank you for that. And again, I'm grateful not only to the residents of District 7, but to my colleagues on the council for entrusting in me uh, the leadership role and the opportunity to serve. Yeah, and I see you all too. And a little bit back in the battle, back in the um That's right. So January 2nd, we'll be right back in. And we hope the residents will come out and join us as we return back to uh, our council chambers. All right. Well, Council Alexander, thank you again. If they want to get in contact with your office, what's the phone number? That number is 205-254-2498. And we always have someone there that's willing to assist you and uh, talk about your needs and concerns. And just call us sometime and say hello. And we'll start back up again with our neighborhood meetings. Please um, call us if you have any questions about when your neighborhood meet. And I'll be happy and looking forward to meeting you there. All right. Well, Thank you all for watching. Please check out what's happening in Birmingham for more interviews. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the audio version of this on Apple Podcasts. Thank you all again, and have a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and Birmingham, let's have a great 2024. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for watching the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Please check out our website app or subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos today.